Chapter 651. Conditions. Translator. Henny Translations Editor. Henny Translations. What the four women needed most now was a secret place to discuss their plans but there was no such magical corner in the tent. Their only alternative was the rudimentary latrine outside. So, Xu Yang Wei went inside while the other three lined up outside. The four of them pinched their noses and discussed for some time until they all turned pale from a lack of air. When they returned to the tent like that, the monks and nuns felt uneasy as they thought that there was something wrong with the food again. Lianqing knew that they were planning an escape so he looked at Shangguan Ayu anticipatorily, hoping to be a part of the plan. But before he could say anything, Xu Yang Wei asked him a question. Why are the nuns, things so stinky? Aren't you all vegetarian? Lianqing was shocked and speechless for a long time. If he was still a robber, he could answer this question easily by either scolding her rudely or telling a dirty joke, but he was a monk now and had to take the question seriously. Scratching his head, he thought for a while but failed to think of any rejoinder like the ones in the classics he had read, so he said, you don't know anything. The monks are way stinkier. Xu Yang Wei waved her hand in front of her nose, trying to drive away the imaginary stink. I can't wait any longer. Let's do it now. Lianqing was surprised yet again. Do it now? You. Three of the four women didn't know Kung Fu, and one of them had lost almost all of her internal energy. Lianqing couldn't figure out how they would escape. But he could only be a bystander. Queen Ju called Shang Guan Hong over and asked, Are the monks all obedient? Yes, they all revere Her Majesty very much, saying that it was a great feat of merit and virtue that Her Majesty is willing to propagate the Dharma. Queen Ju already saw a note of respect in the eyes of the monks and she just wanted to confirm this with Shang Guan Hong while also using this chance to indirectly announce it to the other three women. Good. Now that I'm in distress, I need the comfort of the Dharma the most. I hope that they will recite Sutra to me, and the louder the better. This requirement was very easy to achieve. These monks would quietly chant Sutra when they had nothing else to do, not to mention when the queen had appointed them to do so. It only took some time to select which Sutra to chant. In the end, Kumi made the decision and all the monks started chanting the Vimalakirti Sutra. Lianqing was disdainful at first but when he saw his master Feiyan following along with the crowd, he also sat down and chanted with a voice louder than anyone else's. Queen Ju, with her hands clasped, also followed in chanting in a low voice. This trick worked well, and Buddha soon helped her achieve her true purpose. The officer rushed in and shouted, Quiet down you baldies. It's really a waste of money to keep you all alive. I could have bought as many good horses as you all with the money I've spent on rice. Why are you chanting sutra in the middle of the night? Are you courting death? The chanting abated a little but rose soon again. Seeing that the voice of the chanting would annoy the warden, the monks, long trapped and humiliated, had even more motivation to chant now. The officer lifted his leg and was just about to kick a person when Shangguan Ayu went forward and said, I want to see the person in charge here. The officer put his foot down and looked at her suspiciously. That's me. So, you want to talk to me alone? My tent is more comfortable than this one. I want to see the man of the essence pavilion. The officer paused for a moment before asking, you mean the immortal master? Why would he have time to see you? Be a good girl and come with me. The officer reached out to grab Shangguan Ayu's arm, but Shangguan Hong, who had been sitting down on his knees with the monks, suddenly leaped out, tackled the officer, drew his saber, and laid it across the other side's neck. Shangguan Hong didn't really want to save his half sister, but he didn't dare disobey the queen's order. Don't do anything stupid, shouted the officer. Seeing the matter was now significant, the monks all shut up and gave way. Now we can see that immortal master. Shangguan Ayu, who didn't like to kill, was glad to take a small revenge on this vulgar officer. 
If you lay a finger on me, you'll. We'll still be fine. Will the Khan and the immortal master kill for taking a lowly warden's life? The officer stammered, at a loss for words, and when he opened his mouth again, his voice had softened. The immortal master doesn't live here. Where can I find him? That's your business. If you really don't know, you can send someone to pass on a message. Fine, you win. Why didn't you tell me earlier that you just want to send a message? Could you move the saber away first? Shang Guanhong looked at the queen while still pressing down with his saber. We have a few requests. First, a distinction has to be made between men and women, and monks and nuns. We need separate tents. Before Shang Guan Ayu made the second request, Xu Yang Wei rushed to say, there must be a bed in the tent. I can't sleep on the ground. I need to bathe and change my clothes. It's stinky now. Xiao Feng Chai raised her sleeves and sniffed at it, showing a look of disgust. I need at least one maid. Queen Ju actually had two people around her but Shang Guan Hong was a eunuch and it was inconvenient to order him around sometimes. Nominally Xu Yang Wei was a servant, but her status was almost at the level of her lord's, and she might help support her lord at most and wouldn't do anything else. Clear the latrine outside and have a chamber pot in the tent, Xu Yang Wei added. The four of them continued listing requirements until no one could remember how many requests they had made. One of the nuns was encouraged and also requested in a low voice, we need a fan that everybody can take turns using, it's too hot here. The officer, who was in a daze and could hardly remember any of the requests, frequently nodded and said, all right, I'll take the message. Let me go now. You are hostage. We can't let you go. Just order your men to pass on the message. This was the most humiliating moment for the officer. Over a dozen soldiers rushed in and were surprised and amused at the scene because these monks had always been very obedient and there was almost no need to supervise them. The prison guards, therefore, had become careless. No one had expected that the four women would cause such trouble as soon as they arrived. The officer sat on the ground and coldly ordered the soldiers to make the listed requests to the immortal master. It wasn't until he snapped at them that one clever soldier finally understood what he really meant and left the tent in a hurry. The two sides were caught in a standoff now. Queen Ju asked the monks and nuns to continue chanting the sutra. The Sanskrit chanting started again but in a much quieter voice. This is your plan, asked Lian Qing in a low voice. Just wait and see, Shang Guan are you whispered. If anything happens later, will you help me? Lianqing glanced at his master before nodding. The time for him to offer help came soon after. That soldier didn't go to look for the immortal master at all. Instead, he summoned four companions who gathered outside the tent and then secretly went to the back. They cut out an opening with a sharp knife and swarmed in, planning to take back the hostage. Lianqing had endured for many days and finally had his chance to let off some steam. Fortunately, he still remembered that he was a monk and didn't act too ruthlessly though he still beat the hell out of the intruders. Before the soldiers in front of the door could react, the women were holding several more hostages. The revolt in the prison couldn't be resolved. And in the end, the soldiers had no choice but to report to their superiors. In the second half of the night, a noble officer who was very polite came to the tent. He first expressed his shock and surprise regarding the practice of keeping the men and women together and also the living conditions of the prison, claiming that this wasn't the Khan's intention at all. Then he carefully noted the tedious demands of the women, and said that he would try to satisfy them all. The revolt which was aimed at improving the living conditions had seemed very dangerous in hindsight but it was fairly unimpressive in that moment. The soldiers had tried to save their people only once and then did nothing else. Most of the time it was verbal confrontation and waiting. In the end, Shang Guanhong even removed his saber away from the officer's neck. 
except for the officer who was worried about his own future and refused to talk while maintaining a livid expression, even the captured soldiers joined in on the chit-chat. This monk is really strong, was the phrase they said the most frequently. The noble officer returned in the early morning and fulfilled most of the requirements of the four women. They could have a separate tent, the nuns could have another, but the monks would still be kept together. The latrines would be cleaned every day and bath water would be supplied once every three days. In addition, the lecturer's officer was also transferred out and replaced with an officer who worshipped the Buddha. This was a great victory, and the mutual trust between the four women had considerably increased. Queen Ju even spoke directly to Xiaofeng Chai now, though her request for a maid had not been fulfilled. The officer did send an old biddy, but Queen Ju would never allow someone like that to touch herself. The victory also made them believe that the so-called immortal master, the zombie-faced man of the Essence Pavilion, must have other ulterior motives. Everyone had their own ideas in mind but none of them were willing to speak out about it, so they just kept guessing wildly. The immortal master came at night when the four had bathed, changed into new clothes, felt at ease, and were willing to accept any conditions as long as they were not too excessive. The zombie-faced man was still wearing thick clothes and his voice was faint and weak, but this time there was no disciple of the waning moon hall standing nearby so he could get straight to the point. You are those who are called by the master commander to be taken, and I can't let go of any of you. He drew a bottom line for the negotiations first. You don't have to release anyone but don't hurt people again. It must have been your idea to put aphrodisiac in the rice to try to force the monks to break their precepts. Xu Yang Wei snorted. It's a common trick in City View Alley. The immortal master neither denied it nor did he think it was going too far. It won't happen again. You can rest assured and eat and drink freely now. The four looked at each other until finally, it was still Xu Yang Wei who spoke out. There's no need to hide it from us. Just list your conditions. We may or may not agree. The immortal master's eyes swept back and forth and finally stopped on Shangguan Ayu. You have the first seven chapters of the Taoist divine power. Then he turned to Queen Ju and said, You have the eighth and ninth chapters. You seem to know everything, Queen Ju coldly said. Those two chapters of verses were one of her most important assets and would not be easily given to anyone. As for you two. The immortal master looked at Xiaofeng Chai and Xu Yang Wei before saying, You are useless at the moment. Xu Yang Wei raised her eyebrows in anger. She wanted to say that she was very useful but on second thought, shut her mouth in time. I need the Taoist divine power of the both of you. And you're trading for it with this. Queen Ju pointed to the humble tent, full of disdain. I can't let any of you go but I can spill the beans. The hint of the immortal master couldn't be more obvious. Queen Ju's heart moved a bit but couldn't help but take a look at Shangguan Ryu, wanting to see how she would answer it. We need to consider this. The immortal master hadn't expected to receive the manual of the divine power at once. He walked towards the outside while saying, I'm not in a hurry. Just make more requests if you have any, and I can meet all of them as long as I don't have to let any one of you go. They actually couldn't think of more requests at the moment. But Shangguan Ayu suddenly became excited and said, Get me a jar of good wine. She needed to get drunk and then figure out a way to recover her internal energy. Chapter 652 Drunkenness. Translator, Henny Translations Editor, Henny Translations. The Dragon King never drank. Looking at Shangguan Ayu, who had drank almost half of the pot of wine, Queen Ju coldly reprimanded her. But her words couldn't hurt the other side's feelings at all now. The taste of the wine was quite hot and coarse. Queen Ju did not drink, and Xu Yang Wei and Xiao Feng Chai had given up after a few sips. Shang Guan Ayu, however, complained about a lack of fun as she spat out with her tongue. She was in a perfect state, intoxicated yet sober, 
cognizant enough to feel all the good feelings and numb enough to laugh at the hurtful words of Queen Ju. Shang Guan Ayu held the wine pot alone and went back to the original big tent, where there were only monks living. The monks smelled the alcohol and all of them became flustered in their rush to make way for her. She went straight up to the two monks of the Four Truths Temple and asked, Monks, are you interested in drinking? Feiyan's smile was bigger than usual but Lian Qing anxiously waved and hid his hands in his sleeves, pushing Shang Guan Ayu outside. Ridiculous, it's really ridiculous. How old are you? Such a heavy smell of alcohol. Out of the tent, Lian Qing clasped his hands, saluted, and sighed, little girl is really bold and forthright. It was worth getting to know and making friends with you. If it had been before. Alas, please do not come again. My ten years of cultivation has been ruined by the smell of the wine. Eh, haven't you only been a monk for two or three years? Shang Guan Ayu's mind was still clear. My master said that I have the root of wisdom and I had been a monk for ten years in my previous life, so. Alas, Amitabha, what kind of wine is this? Shang Guan Ayu laughed and left, letting Lian Qing keep his ten years of cultivation of his previous life. But she did not want to drink alone and also did not want to go back to the tent to listen to Queen Ju's sarcasm, so she held the pot and turned around on the spot, walking towards the soldier's tent. She shouted to the archers on the watchtower when she was halfway there, come down and have a drink. Over a dozen arrows were immediately pointed at her. The soldiers looked at each other and none of them wanted to be the first to shoot. The soldiers who were resting in the tents all came out after hearing the voice. Looking at the half-drunk little girl, they all couldn't help but smile. Shang Guan Ayu also smiled. This wasn't the first time she had gotten drunk, and also wouldn't be the last time. Come on, it's my treat. The soldiers all looked at the new chief. The new chief, the only one who didn't smile, surveyed the tents where the prisoners lived before saying, What kind of trick are you playing? No one is allowed to go over there there may be a trap. Ha ha, Shang Guan Ayu laughed out loud, lifted the wine pot with both hands and gulped down a mouthful before saying, everyone says that the men of the prairie will drink whatever wine comes to them. You are really disappointing. She's just a little girl, some of the soldiers defiantly argued. Can she get us all drunk? More soldiers were ready to try. The chief grunted and turned back to the tent. Seven or eight soldiers went forward, and each of them produced a wooden bowl from their bags and looked at Shang Guan Ayu with a smile, feeling a bit embarrassed. Shang Guan Ayu filled the bowls with wine and finally lifted the wine pot to her ear and shook several times, smiling, oops, there's only a little left. It seems that we can't fully enjoy ourselves. The soldiers did not care. One of them drunk up first, smacked his lips and said, good wine. Share the wine and drink as you like, that's how we'll enjoy ourselves to the fullest. The crowd held a bowl in their hands and drank it up all at the same time. Shang Guan Ayu threw away the wine pot, her body already swaying a bit. I owe you one. I'll make up for it later. We'll pay you back. Seeing that the prisoner and the prison guard's little wine banquet was about to end, the chief came out of the tent with a wine jar under each arm, which was much bigger than the one that Shang Guan Ayu had brought. Then he said with a cold face, the people of the Norland are not so stingy, and we'll pay you back now. Those who can't drink much walk away now. Do not let the little girl embarrass you. No one would admit their drinking capacity was small. The chief ordered someone to bring out some clean bowls. The host and the guest then stood drinking in the courtyard. At first, it was a bit dull but after drinking two bowls of wine, the soldiers quickly reached the same state as Shang Guan Ayu, talking and laughing, and some were even singing and dancing. Drinking wine without meat is like, is like, a soldier could not think of anything to finish his comparison so Shang Guan Ayu helped him. It's like a steed without a saddle, a hero without a treasured sword 
a beauty without a dowry, a king without a counselor, a general without a soldier, or a woman without a man. The one who said this was kicked and punched and bore the burden of going to a nearby camp to ask for meat. The prison in the Forbidden Zone covered a large area which included over a dozen camps and kept many prisoners. The camp where Shangguan Ayu was imprisoned was actually the best one. The soldier who went out to get meat soon finished his task and brought back a leg of beef and four legs of lamb which were all prepared and ready to eat, with four curious soldiers following him. The soldiers were all experienced and they quickly built a simple rack with their long spears and hung those five chunks of meat. Then they took out a knife and sliced the meat of to eat. Shangguan Ayu also ate a little but continued to drink most of the time. Seeing this, the soldiers on the watchtowers protested and requested that the chief should treat them equally by having them take turns to guard and drink. So the banquet in the courtyard became even more lively. Shangguan Ayu didn't remember how many toasts she had made and also didn't remember what she had said or heard. But she was very happy because everyone was very friendly to her. They were prison guards and prisoner, and also at the same time, hosts and guest. There was no such loyalty as master and servant, and neither was there any of the so-called betrayal either. The two pots of wine were soon finished off, and the man who went out to borrow wine brought back more soldiers. By the middle of the night, there were already eighty or ninety people gathered in the little camp. The ones who came later didn't even know why the party started. When they saw a little girl drinking like a man in the crowd, they were all stunned. But after only a bowl of wine in their stomachs, they all treated her like a close friend. This was about the time when the previous officer of the camp came, who was also holding a small pot of wine. What a crowded party! Count me in! He had come as he had heard that there was wine and meat being served here, though he didn't expect to see Shangguan are you here. Stupefied, he then laughed, so, you like drinking. Why didn't you say so earlier? Come, accompany me in having a few drinks. Since she was drunk, it took Shangguan Ayu a long while to recognize who the person was in front of her. Then she pointed at him and said, You are not good, bullying women. Definitely not a good man of the prairie. The drunkards in the camp were all in high spirits, and a few slices of mutton and beef was no longer enough for their appetites. Full of energy, they were ready to fight each other. Shangguan Ayu's words had provided them with a perfect opportunity to let off their steam. The officer reached out with his hand but suddenly found that the eyes of the people around were not right. He hurriedly took three steps back and said, Hey, calm down. Do you want to offend my superior? The new chief of the camp forced his way out of the crowd and said with a strong smell of wine, What kind of superior are you? A woman bully, and an ass kisser who can't even ride a horse properly. I'm gonna offend you today. The officer's face paled, and he suddenly turned around and ran desperately towards the camp gate. An arrow swished past his ear and then he was kicked in the butt. He was being treated like a fugitive. Shangguan Ayu didn't see the whole process. She fell down but didn't fall asleep completely. And there was a joyful uproar in her ear as if many people were passionately urging her to drink again, have another bowl of wine. When she opened her eyes again, she felt a splitting headache and was limp as if she had been torn into pieces, and then barely glued back together by a crude craftsman. Am I dead? she asked. Almost said a disgruntled voice. Shangguan Ayu finally recognized the person in front of her, where is this? Where else could it be? The old place. Xu Yang Wei peevishly said while holding a silk handkerchief in her hand. She was carefully wiping Miss Ayu's forehead. This was the tent that had held those monks. Shangguan Ayu was lying in the very inside portion with her head resting on Xu Yenwei's legs. Five steps away sat the smiling Feiyan and Lianqing with a look of reverence. How did we get back here? Shangguan Ayu wanted to sit up but was pinned down by Xu Yang Wei. How do you have the brass to even ask? You were dead drunk, 
and if it wasn't for me, you'd be trampled to death by a bunch of Norland men. And no one was willing to take you in except for these kind-hearted monks. Otherwise, you'd have slept with a bunch of stinky men and what would happen if the news got out? Now you'd better lie down for a while. You are a young lady, and even the bitches of the retention alley. I never saw you drink so much in the castle. Shangguan Ayu stuck her tongue out and smiled, then closed her eyes and fell asleep again. It was a sound sleep, without noise or nightmares. Shu Yang Wei looked down at the delicate jade-like face and wiped more gently, suddenly thinking that she was really lucky to not be in a relationship with the Dragon King. Looking at his women, none of them were happy, or even normal. Shangguan Ayu woke up in the afternoon and felt much better. Feiyan and Lianqing accepted her thanks but another group of monks glared at her. The tent was filled with the smell of wine and probably wouldn't dissipate for two or three days. The effect of the last night's impromptu feast was great. As soon as she left the tent, Shangguan Ayu found that there were many soldiers in the camp, many of whom smiled at her with a bruised face but dared not speak. How come the people from the other camps were left behind? Shangguan Ayu felt very strange. Xu Yang Wei held the young lady back and really wanted to pat her to wake her up. Obviously it's to prevent them from letting out the secret. I don't know what to say. You just focused on drinking and didn't even look for someone to pass along a message. If the Dragon King knew that we are here, he'll come right away to save us. Shangguan Ayu knocked herself on the head, and exclaimed, what an idiot I was to forget all about it. The young noble officer, who had once negotiated with the four women, came over, followed by two armed soldiers. Please come with me, instructor Shangguan. Xu Yang Wei stood in front of Shangguan Ayu like a petite and aggressive female bird. What for? If you dare to touch Miss Ayu, the Dragon King will rip out your heart and lungs and feed it to the dogs. The noble officer smiled. I dare not touch your lady. Even without the Dragon King, the soldiers here can beat me half dead. The man they beat up last night will never be able to walk again. Xu Yang Wei had watched the whole incident herself last night so she moved aside a little. Shang Guan Ayu, however, didn't remember much about it. She stared at the officer for a moment before saying, Did we have a drink together last night? The noble officer's face flushed a little, two bowls. Foot, Xu Yang Wei wouldn't let Miss Ayu be fooled by a man. Two bowls of wine and you got as drunk as a madman. I got you out of his hands last night. The noble officer's face turned even redder. Shang Guan Ayu laughed aloud, thinking that the scene must have been very interesting. Their destination wasn't far away, just in another tent of the camp. The soldiers withdrew but Xu Yang Wei was determined to not leave, and the noble officer didn't compel her to do so. My name is Asheba. I hope you will not accept any requests from the immortal master. I will find a way to get you out. Chapter 653, Advantage Translator, Henyi Translations Editor, Henyi Translations Asheba was from a small tribe, one of the few families not controlled by the ten kings of the Norland. By convention, he had joined the court attendants' army of the Khan at the age of sixteen and after serving for eight years, was appointed to the position of centurion in a prison in the Forbidden Zone. The position was neither high nor low, it was more relevant that the position was far away from the core power structure, which meant that he had actually been relegated. Without a strong backer or a strong relationship with the powerful, any lower noble like Asheba had almost no chance of getting promoted. Asheba himself had served at the prison for over a year now, and in just another year, he would be able to end his term and return to his tribe. Because he hadn't made a name for himself in the royal court, his future was bleak even when he did go back to his own family. Asheba didn't want to disappear into nothingness like this. He had made a bunch of friends who were all young men without an influential family background. They also felt the unfair treatment of the nobles in the royal court and were worried about the future of the prairie. 
Aside from the lords who were fighting for the throne of the Khan, they were one of the few people who dared talk and criticize the Khan. He's very old now and more interested in women and longevity than ruling the country. The Norland needs a young leader who is dynamic and capable of breaking the shackles. These were their core views. However, King Kuari, the youngest of the ten kings, did not receive their allegiance. King Kuari is only young on the surface. His heart is as rotten as the old men's. So this group of young people had chosen their own leader, Prince Duodun. Strictly speaking, they didn't have a clear or complete plan. Everyone worked for Duodun according to their own understanding and ability. Due to their low positions, their efforts had attracted little attention from any of the other forces. As Heba had been moved by Shangguan Ayu and felt that she could be an important asset to the prince in the future. At first, she was just a pretty woman that had suddenly been dumped into a prison from out of nowhere, and though she was the queen of the land of fragrance, it seemed like her title was a favor from someone strong. It was not until the banquet last night that Asheba realized that this little girl, who had been so intoxicated, had a natural charisma for leadership, and that her acquiring the land of fragrance was no coincidence. This changed his opinion of the 1,000 female soldiers stationed at the royal court, and many more in a faraway land, as they were no longer just ornamental flowers, but rather barbed weapons. The female archers of the Land of Fragrance had helped the Dragon King defeat the Golden Rock Army. This irrefutable fact, which had been spread by word of mouth, had become an absurd rumor after trekking mountains and rivers before arriving at the Dragon Court. As Heba, however, saw the hidden authenticity in the rumors from Shangguan Ayu. He explained to her the small group's view of the situation and their ideals about the future while taking extra care to avoid mentioning any names, especially Duodens. In the end, he said, the masters are one of the largest pest swarms on the prairie. If we let them continue controlling the Khan, the Norland is not far from falling apart. I don't know what he wants from you, but I don't want him to succeed. Shangguan Ayu didn't expect that her pastime of drinking to relieve boredom would have such an effect. But she still felt a bit dizzy at the moment and therefore did not immediately respond to the other party's offer. Xu Yang Wei, however, widened her eyes and asked, we are more unwilling to let the zombie-faced men succeed. Honestly, can you really get us out? She had heard nothing else clearly except for the words get you out. There's always a way. It should be simple. Pass the news to the Dragon King, someone will naturally come get us out, and then all the credit will go to you. As Heba bitterly smiled while shaking his head. It might have been possible a day ago. But now the whole prison area is sealed off. There are at least two passes outside the camp that can't be bypassed. So I can't even send out a message. And I'm afraid it won't be easy for anyone to save people from here, even for the Dragon King. He always has a way, Shangguan Ayu casually replied before suddenly realizing that she had never felt panic ever since she was caught. It was because she had a deep faith in him. From when he was servant horn to the Dragon King, he had saved her many times. As Heba coughed twice before he continued. Actually, I have another way. Just report this matter to the Khan. How can the Norlan treat an honorable guest like this? The Khan will definitely set you free and then punish the immortal master. You just said that the masters control the Khan, but how can you be sure that the kidnapping is not the Khan's intention? Xu Yang Wei asked. It's not just the masters but also the waning moon hall. How would they collude with the masters? Shangguan Ayu asked as a follow-up. As Heba could not answer any of her questions. After pausing for a moment, he said, I'll get you out of here either way. But before that, I'll try to make your situation more comfortable. Regardless, I hope that you won't give it to him no matter what the immortal master wants. Don't worry. Xu Yang Wei stood in front of Shangguan Ayu, we know what we should do and who's good and who's bad. If you really want to help us live a bit more comfortably, 
get us two more tents and some, make up powder. As soon as as Heba took his leave, Xu Yang Wei turned around and said, this boy has an ulterior motive, Miss Ayu. Don't be fooled by him. What ulterior motives could he have? Shang Guan Ayu was amused by Xu Yenwei's vigilance. He, he could fall in love with you. Xu Yang Wei stared into Shang Guan Ayu's eyes as if this was all the young lady's fault. Shang Guan Ayu smiled and said, You call this an ulterior motive? It's not a bad thing to be loved. Xu Yenwei's eyes couldn't grow any wider. You are a young lady, how can you say this kind of words? And the Dragon King. What has it to do with the Dragon King? Does he have the right to interfere with whether others love me or not? Xu Yang Wei was stupefied. She touched Shang Guan Ayu's forehead and said, You are really outspoken today. I'm embarrassed for you, so you'd better quit drinking. Even if the Dragon King has no right to meddle in your affairs, you still have a dead husband. Xu Yang Wei shut up in time. Shang Guan Ayu lost her good mood and started walking towards the outside, saying, I can quit anything except for alcohol. Life is short, so I hope to be free and drink whenever I can. Eh, I've always thought you were free and easy, but why do you look like an old grandma today? Shang Guan Ayu laughed and left, leaving the confused Xu Yang Wei behind, who touched her own forehead and wondered when had she become so garrulous. It's all the Dragon King's fault, she murmured. She would have been the one who was carefree if she wasn't always taking care of the Dragon King's women. Queen Ju and Xiao Feng Chai were sitting with their backs facing against each other, pretending that the other did not exist. The tent finally woke up from the boredom after Shang Guan Ayu and Xu Yang Wei came in one after the other. We'll find a way out on our own. Shang Guan Ayu glanced at the three women, no longer drunk. Xiao Feng Chai looked at her in amazement, weren't we clear on this? When you recover your power and run away, you go tell the Dragon King and then he'll get us all out. It's not safe. Even if I do manage to run away, the Immortal Master and the Waning Moon Hall will transfer you away, and the Dragon King also doesn't have too much manpower here. It won't be easy for him to save all of us alone. What I'm saying is that we have to find a way to escape together. Shang Guan Ayu hadn't proposed a specific plan yet but just that idea alone already made the other three feel frightened and uneasy. I don't know Kung Fu. I can't run fast even if I want to. Xu Yang Wei unconsciously resorted to her old means and said this in a soft voice as if a gust of wind could blow her down. This is the forbidden zone of the royal court. There are soldiers everywhere, and one loose arrow, Xiao Feng Chai shivered. She wasn't afraid of any men in front of her but it would be difficult for her to deal with them if they were far away. The two objected in a mild tone but Queen Ju surprisingly agreed, saying, Shang Guan Ayu is right. We can't count on the Dragon King. He came to the Norland to form an alliance and will not offend the dignitaries here easily. It's better to think of our own way than cause him trouble. Actually, the Dragon King had already provoked many people but Shang Guan Ayu didn't mention these things. What can we do then? I heard that the outside is a big grassland, at least half a day's journey from the closest populated area even with a horse. Besides, there are horsemen patrolling on the periphery, guarding so closely not even a rabbit can run out. Xu Yang Wei raised many difficulties. Shang Guan Ayu revealed a confident smile. You heard. From whom? From the monks, Xu Yang Wei tried to lie but changed her mind halfway. You've drunk with a large group of men but you won't allow me to talk with them. Queen Ju failed to conceal her disgust and took a step back, maintaining her distance with the bad woman. If she had power in her hands right now, the first thing she would do would be to drive Xu Yang Wei away. Not only was this woman born low but she was also disloyal. She had forgotten about the present queen as soon as she met her former young lady. Xiao Feng Chai, however, took a step forward and appeared quite excited. 
Yes, we don't know Kung Fu but that doesn't mean we are useless. The immortal master is not a real man, but all the guards here are men. Isn't that an advantage for us in dealing with them? Xu Yang Wei suddenly came to understand. Right, the men here are easy to deal with. One coy look at them will make them obedient. But there's one thing that's strange. Miss Are You, how could you come up with this idea? It should have been Sister Feng Chai and me. Queen Ju looked even worse. She even regretted agreeing to Shangguan Ayu's proposal. I quit. It's blasphemy to even let these men look at me. Xiao Feng Chai's eyes changed at the very thought of using her charm. She ogled Queen Ju and said, Don't worry. You are the queen, so how could you do such a lowly thing? Just leave it to me and Sister Yang Wei. Your Highness can just sit here and wait for the Dragon King to gracefully rescue. Queen Ju hummed and found herself being ganged up upon so she held her tongue in anger. We have to run away together. We won't leave anyone behind. Shangguan are you made this rule. Queen Ju quickly adjusted her mentality. She had already been isolated, so if she kept being so reserved, even her noble identity would be forgotten. If they really had to run away from the prison on their own, she should be the well-deserved leader. Well, Xiao Feng Chai and Xu Yang Wei will be in charge of, dealing with the men and asking about the situation. The more detailed the better. As for Shangguan Are you, you should find a way to restore your Kung Fu and if you can, you can drink a few more times with the prison guards. Your Highness has issued an edict, so how dare this little woman not obey? Xiao Feng Chai said with no intention of obeying orders at all. Queen Ju said with her head held high, I won't be idle either. I'll deal with the immortal master. Isn't he trying to get the Taoist divine power? I'll give him a copy to let his guard down. She pointed at her heart and continued, I've got a few copies here. Shangguan Ayu also had a plan. She really needed to restore her internal energy. The senior monk of the Four Noble Truths Temple may help, she thought. Chapter 654, Transferring Internal Energy Translator, Henyi Translations Editor, Henyi Translations The prison camp in the Forbidden Zone changed locations seasonally like the rest of the royal court, so the facilities were very poor. Most of the prisoners were subjects who had merely offended the Khan for some reason and might be pardoned at any time, so the prison was not heavily guarded. Unless the supervisors were particularly stressed, the torture equipment like the chains were rarely used. So it was very easy to leave the tent, and one might even be able to visit friends and relatives at another camp if one greased the wheels enough. But it was very hard to run away. There were cavalry stations every three miles within a ten-mile radius of the camp, and every station had fierce dogs with keen senses of smell. And if a prisoner was ever found fleeing, a manhunt would be launched. According to the rules of the Norland, attempting to escape was a capital crime and the resulting punishment was to be shot to death immediately. Xu Yang Wei trembled in fear, saying, the guard said that no one has ever escaped from here. Xiao Feng Chai was responsible for communicating with the new chief. Our camp is the strangest. All the monks and nuns were delivered here without a charge. The officials never asked. It was the immortal master who gave the orders. Later, the immortal master came again. This time, Queen Ju bargained hard with him. Although no agreement was reached, it made the other side feel that the four women had no intentions of escaping. But it was a bit difficult for Shangguan Ayu to recover her internal energy to the level she desired. After hearing her general description of the Indra fragrance, Feiyan shook his head. Your internal energy is sealed with the drug. If I do something rashly to save you, you may lose your internal energy forever. But he taught Shangguan Ayu a simple set of method to guide her internal qi. Although it can't help you restore your internal energy, it can calm your mind. You'll inevitably receive internal injuries if the drug effect persists for too long. 
but this manual may be able to help you avoid that. As they spoke, several monks, ignoring Lian Qing's glare, listened from a distance. Instead of shying away, they listened even more attentively when Fayan taught the manual. Fayan didn't lower his voice. Instead, he spoke up loudly, saying, This set of manual is not a secret one. Those who are fated can learn it. As a Buddhist manual, it had certain requirements for meditation. Luckily, Shangguan Ayu had once followed Master Lianhua in learning the essay of severing obsession and had also gained some basic skills in meditation, so it was very easy for her to get started. But just as Feiyan had said, this manual was easy to learn but wasn't useful in recovering one's internal energy. Shangguan Ayu practiced it for several days but her Dantian remained devoid of internal energy. During these days, the noble officer Azheba kept his promise and tried every mean at his disposal to make use of his former connections in the court attendants' army and tell the Khan the truth. From top to bottom, all the prison guards liked Shangguan Ayu's frankness and helped smooth things over, but the feedback was disappointing. The Khan knew that there were four imprisoned women since long ago. The efforts of Azheba backfired, and orders came from the palace that said that anyone who dared to talk about the four women would be killed without mercy and that his or her family and tribe would also be implicated. Now few people dared to help Shangguan Ayu no matter how highly they thought of her. As Heba felt quite guilty and hid in his tent. Four days he did not dare see her. The escape plan was put on hold for the time being. Well, the guards thought that the Khan didn't know about us being here and therefore were willing to help us. Now they are afraid to even talk to me. Xu Yang Wei was the first to become discouraged. We still have to send a message to the Dragon King. Queen Ju had once said that she would not trouble the Dragon King, but now she changed her mind. The Khan asked everyone to keep a secret, which means that he knows he is in the wrong. The Dragon King doesn't have to rush to rescue anyone. As long as this whole situation made public, the Khan will probably release us and put the blame on someone else while claiming that he didn't know anything about it. It wasn't easy to achieve this goal even when the guards were drinking with Shangguan Ayu. Queen Ju turned to Shangguan Ayu and said, that officer Azheba seems to have some contacts. If Miss Ayu can persuade him. I'll try. Shangguan Ayu wasn't too sure about it. The more she learned about the soldiers of the Norland, the more she found that these people revered the Khan. Azheba was no exception. Although he occasionally spoke some veiled criticism about the Khan, they were the kind of words that only the faithful would speak. The main point being that she couldn't even see Azheba now. Things changed on the seventh afternoon after Shangguan Ayu was captured. Lianqing rushed in in a panic which startled Queen Ju, who immediately drew Xu Yang Wei to the front to block him. My master is sick, seriously sick. The guards don't care. Little girl. Instructor. Queen, you are familiar with them. Please ask them to send a doctor here. And also, my master wants to meet you. Shangguan Ayu and Xu Yang Wei went to see the head of the camp first. The head appeared quite reluctant to cooperate but couldn't bear Xu Yan Wei's sarcasm and in the end agreed to find a doctor. Then the two went into the big tent to visit Fei Yan. Fei Yan was still wearing his iconic smile but his face was very dark, his lips purple, and his eyes bloodshot, which made him look very old and not like an eminent monk at all. Several monks were standing nearby gossiping like unconcerned bystanders. There will always be visions when an eminent monk passes away. Look at this one, there are many visions but none of them are normal. Buddha is not gullible. One can cover himself up in ordinary times but will be exposed when one is dying. Lianqing knelt before his master with tears in his eyes. His eyes were fixed on his master and he didn't even refute the monk's taunts. Shangguan Ayu was surprised and asked, has the master been poisoned? Lianqing shook his head, impossible. Master hasn't eaten for four or five days. The food we ate before that was the same, 
so it's impossible for him to be poisoned while I'm still fine. Feyen's voice was weak and his tone was as calm as ever, as if every word he said carried with it heavy significance. You are here. Shangguan Ayu sat down on her knees on a futon. I'm here, but the monk is not ill. Lianqing, who had been flustered, finally realized the problem and asked, Master, what is going on? Someone stabbed you in the back, didn't they? Tell me who is it, and I'll avenge you. Silly disciple. Favor is illusory and so is hatred. I asked you to give up avenging your brother, so how could I let you avenge me? But. But, Lianqing was choked with sobs and could no longer speak. You can go out for a while. I need to have a word with the benefactress. Lianqing was very reluctant to leave but he could not disobey his master's order. So he got up and said to the rest of the monks, all of you, get out if you don't want to be beaten. The monks did not move. Lianqing growled and stormed towards them, causing more than half of the thirty or so monks immediately ran out. Only Kumi relied on his identity and didn't move, and his fellow disciples also followed in staying motionlessly. I haven't cultivated much in this life, so I don't care if it'll be ruined or not, Lianqing shouted with his eyes wide open. It seemed that he did not care even if he had to kill someone. Kumi retreated half a step and said to Feiyan who sat behind Lianqing with a trembling voice, Are the senior monks of the For Noble Truths Temple all so arrogant? While struggling to speak, Feiyan took a few deep breaths before saying, Lianqing, do not disturb the senior brothers. Lianqing shot a vicious glance at Kumi and strode out of the tent, guarding the door and not letting anyone else in. Shangguan Ayu asked in a low voice, is it the disciple of the Essence Pavilion? Yes and no, Feiyan replied. Xu Yang Wei frowned and said, Old monk, you are so sick now, can you please stop talking ambiguously? I have no intention of revenge, so it doesn't matter who injured me. It was more than a month ago that I had a kung fu competition with him. I was defeated and I admitted it, but I couldn't hand over that thing. I could only promise to stay in the prison and not leave without permission. Shang Guan Ayu glanced back at Kumi and his fellow disciples before asking in a very small voice, What is it? The Sumeru Mustard Mantra. Shang Guan Ayu was slightly stunned, but in the Stone Kingdom. I gave it to two young people. Ji Yu Shenwei and Lotus had almost effortlessly gotten this internal energy manual and it was exactly this manual that had laid the foundation for the three-in-one power. Shangguan Ayu learned of this when she was still keeping up a regular correspondence with the Dragon King and thought that the monk did not care. Feiyan had been defeated in a kung fu competition and received a very serious internal injury. He thought that he could recuperate on his own, but did not expect that the issue would break out a month later and ferociously attack him. He knew that he would not last long so he tried to explain the situation as briefly as possible. The Dragon King and Lotus still have goodwill between them so the mantra is good for them, but some people are lost and hard to change, and the mantra will only help them perpetuate wicked deeds. The Sumeru Mustard Mantra is like the essay of severing obsession. Shangguan Ayu was surprised and delighted. This was actually her wish. She didn't expect that the old monk had already secretly fulfilled it for her. Feyan slowly shook his head, the mantra doesn't have the effect of changing a person's heart, and neither does the essay of severing obsession. It only has a temporary effect. You must already know of the Grand Enlightenment Sword Sutra. Shangguan Ayu nodded. She also knew that the Dragon King and Lotus called it the Death Sutra. I have, I guess. The Grand Enlightenment Sword Sutra might be part of the reason why they are acting so evilly, so I wanted to use the mantra to counteract the effects of the Sword Sutra. Is it really possible? Shangguan Ayu was so eager that she almost forgot about Feiyan's serious illness. I don't know. It's just a guess but unfortunately, I won't be able to see it through. I'll leave the rest to you. To me? The smile on Feiyan's face suddenly became bitter. 
I'm just like Lian Xin and Lian Hua. Even though I know that people's minds are very unpredictable, I still persist in reforming it. After all, I can't escape the mortal rut. Shangguan Ayu didn't know what to say. She very much wished that everyone could give up hatred and cruelty, especially the Dragon King. Feiyan did not speak for a while and his smile looked a little stiff. Xu Yang Wei whispered, did he, pass away? Kumi and three disciples approached, what did the senior monk say? What did he leave to you? Feiyan suddenly let out a breath. Then a low humming sound came from his thin chest, which was not loud but it clearly reached everyone's ears, making the listener feel both comfortable and heavy at heart. Shangguan Ayu suddenly came to her senses and found Xu Yang Wei, Kumi, and other people looking dull. Although they were standing still, it seemed that they had lost their consciousness. Feiyan was the opposite, sweating profusely and dying. The timing is just right. Feiyan couldn't even keep his smile up now. Yu, Shangguan Ayu was surprised and even a bit frightened. She felt that she had only fainted for a moment, and could not have imagined the monk would do such a thing, you've transferred all your internal energy to me. I can't help you recover, so I can only give you mine. I'm sorry, but your original power will never be restored. Shangguan Ayu was stupefied. She did not care about the original Taoist divine power but felt that the senior monk behavior was really unbelievable. Promise me one thing. Feiyan appeared to be in a bit of a hurry. Please go ahead, master. The Grand Enlightenment Sword Sutra can turn people into demons but also can make people become Buddhas. You need, you need to, Feiyan seemed powerless to go on. Send it to the eminent monks of the Fu Noble Truths Temple. Shangguan Ayu didn't quite understand why the Death Sutra could make people become Buddhas, but she knew that many people were interested in this set of sword techniques and perhaps the monks were no exception. Destroy it. Feiyan let out a long breath and finally finished what he wanted to say. A man of understanding doesn't need it. Those who have no understanding will only use it to do evil. I'm glad that I did not see this scripture when I was alive. To become a Buddha was my greed and even I cannot resist it. I'll try my best, but the Dragon King and Lotus, the scripture had been so deeply imprinted on the two's mind that Shangguan Ayu couldn't get rid of it. Feiyan decided to spend the last parts of his life in confession. It was not until he reached the state of absolute nothingness did he finally realize that his desire was no less than a commoner's just in a different direction. He looked at Shangguan Ayu who had no more killing desire and believed that his choice was right. The manual that he had taught Shangguan Ayu a few days ago wasn't an internal energy manual, but rather the groundwork of accepting another's internal energy. From then on, Feiyan had made the decision that he couldn't pass his internal energy to his disciple. Although Lian Xin was loyal and trustworthy, he still had a killing desire and enhancing his internal energy would only incite him into taking revenge. Looking at the old monk, Shangguan Ayu felt that she already understood what the other side had meant. If the Sumeru mustard mantra didn't work on the Dragon King and Lotus, there would be only one way to destroy the Death Sutra, the way that she was most unwilling to use. Chapter 655, Shadow Translator, Henny Translations Editor any translations. The belated doctor did not come in handy. All he did was remind the chief of the camp to burn the body as soon as possible because the old monk's death was somewhat abnormal. Indeed, Feiyan was like a lamp that had run out of oil, his thin body as skinny as a skeleton. Kumi and several others were so scared out of their minds by the sight that they ran out of the tent and chanted sutras, regretting that they hadn't obediently left earlier. The monks, who didn't remember that they had lost consciousness for a moment, were under the impression that Feiyan's appearance had changed in the blink of an eye. Xu Yang Wei was also scared, as she dragged Shangguan Ayu away while running away. As night fell, a deep Sanskrit chant came from the big tent. Shangguan Ayu liked the sound but could not calm the confusion in her mind. 
she began to doubt whether she had really understood Feyan's last request. Why did Feyan want to destroy the Death Sutra through killing when he had always opposed all killing? Shangguan Ayu felt that she might have thought too much. Even if Feyan really had the intention of doing so, she didn't have to do it. Like the senior monk, she intrinsically believed that the Dragon King and Lotus weren't incurable devils. And the more salient point was Shangguan Ayu was no match for the two at all. Feyan's internal energy was very powerful but the portion he had transferred into Shangguan Ayu's body was only 70 or 80 percent of his total power. Although it was much more powerful than the Taoist divine power that Shangguan Ayu had before, it had not yet reached the peak and Shangguan Ayu couldn't use it right away. She could clearly feel that there was a hard core inside her Dantian, and with each grand cycle of her internal qi, the hard core would melt a bit and turn into internal qi. According to a rough estimate, it would take at least a few months to finish the whole process and right now she could only exert 10-20% of the power. Even if she could regain full control of power in the end, Shangguan Ayu was not a match of the practitioners of the Death Sutra swordsmanship. There was no chance of winning for a person who had no killing desire when he fought against two people who were full of killing intent. Feyan had given her his internal energy but also a task that she could not complete. Shangguan Ayu shook her head and temporarily cast away the burden in her mind. As the bitter taste lingered in her mouth, she missed the wine again. It was late at night, and the other three women were fast asleep. Queen Ju was tossing and turning as if she were complaining about the harshness of the conditions even in her dreams. Shangguan Ayu slipped out of the tent. She couldn't find any good wine so she could only use another way to relieve her depression. Regaining the ability to leap onto roofs and vault over walls was so pleasurable for Shangguan Ayu that she even felt a little guilty about Feyan who had just died. 10 or 20 percent of internal energy was enough for her to perform 40 or 50 percent of her lightness skills but she was still careful to not alarm the guards in the camp as she leapt out of the outer picket fence and left the poorly defended prison. Although she was unwilling to accept it, Shangguan Ayu had to admit that old man Mu saying that Kung Fu could really make a person free was true. She made a large circle around the prison area and checked the terrain before she followed the original route to return. She would keep her promise and escape with the three women. Just then she noticed a man sneaking out of the camp. Shangguan Ayu's first reaction was to not meddle in others' affairs, but the bald head made her change her mind. With the dim moonlight, Shangguan Ayu could recognize that the man was Kumi from the big tent. Kumi was also a prisoner, so how could he walk out of the camp freely? He had no idea that there was someone watching him nearby and he walked quickly, obviously very familiar with the route. After several turns, he arrived at the smallest camp in the prison area, which was also the only vacant camp. The immortal master had waited for a while. Though expressionless, the silence itself showed his impatience. Feyan. Feyan is dead. Kumi appeared a bit timid. I know. The immortal master was apparently not interested in the news. But he, didn't leave anything. Kumi's voice was trembling. It was your idea to keep all the monks together, and it was also you who assured me that you could persuade Feyan to hand over the Sumeru mustard divine power. Feyan is very cunning. I thought you were more cunning. Yes, yes. Well. Oh, I see. Feyan has secretly given the divine power to the woman of the land of fragrance. Hem. Women are easy to deal with. As long as we do something. I'm pretty sure she will hand it over soon. Do you think it's because of my kindness that I've been doing nothing these days? We don't have to do anything special. Kumi wiped the sweat from his forehead with his hand and continued, it'll be just like the first day. Just use a bit of aphrodisiac. Feyan is dead now, and no one can stop the effects of the drugs. Try to find another way. Do not use these means anymore. Why? Kumi was surprised. 
it's none of your business. Go to those women, pretend to help them escape and beguile them into handing over the Sumeru mustard divine power and the Taoist scroll. If you can't do it, prepare to stay here forever. Kumi, like a wild dog wounded in a fight, stooped low and stumbled away. The immortal master held his thick coat about him and didn't move for a long time. Women, he muttered, are unpredictable. A shadow came out of the tent behind him, will we always be controlled by that woman? She likes to hide in the shadows, so let's just hide in her shadow. Since she wants the whole world to be in chaos, it's also a good chance for us. What's she gonna do to the Dragon King's women? Arresting them, but not punishing them. Do not guess. Whatever choices she makes, she's going around in circles. It doesn't matter to you or me. The Dragon King has killed six more families. Alas, there are only six people left. The Essence Pavilion is almost gone. The Immortal Master turned around and then said with a rare touch of excitement in his voice, you may be the only one left in the end. Are you ready? Yes. Your Kung Fu will grow stronger and stronger. When you kill the Dragon King, remember to tell him that the Immortal Peng will never die. When you kill that woman, tell her that no matter how divided the Essence Pavilion is, it is still one. I will. The shadow held the immortal master and walked to the tent. Shen Guan Ayu felt a chill in her heart. She recognized that the person was Wild Horse, and the weird thing was that the voice had come from the immortal master alone, even as she knew that the woman they were talking about was Lotus. Six of them had died and there were still six left. It turned out that Wild Horse had joined the Essence Pavilion and become the immortal master's dual cultivator. They had sought refuge with the waning moon hall but in the meantime had made plans to kill Lotus. Shangguan Ayu snuck back to her tent and woke the other three up one by one. I have a plan to escape from the prison, and I'll do it tomorrow night. Queen Ju immediately sobered up and asked, can you guarantee the safety? Xiao Fengchai firmly believed in the tenth Gongzi. No matter what the others do, I'll go with you. Xu Yang Wei yawned, tomorrow night. Let me sleep for a while first. Shang Guan Ayu's plan was to leave the prison as a nun. Early the next morning, Queen Ju brought Xu Yang Wei and Shang Guan Hong with her to personally visit the nuns in another tent. She listened to their preaching and promised to support them. After this meeting, the nuns' respect for the queen had reached the point of flattery. Xiao Feng Chai tactfully made the chief of the camp produce his waste token and show it off. With this, you can go anywhere in the royal court, even the palace. Though the chief's words were a bit exaggerated, Xiao Feng Chai was sure that this waste token would be very useful. In the end, stealing the waste token was left to Shangguan Ayu. She didn't tell the other three that she had regained some of her powers but instead said that she had received the relevant training before and that she was sure of succeeding. Shang Guan Ayu wasn't idle either while Queen Ju and Xiao Feng Chai were busy. That morning, Fei An's body was cremated in the camp. Not many people attended the funeral, and Shang Guan Ayu was the only woman among them. Lian Qing knelt down and wept bitterly. Kumi sighed while shaking his head. Shangguan Ayu thought that Kumi would take this chance to approach her and perform the task the immortal master had assigned him but it turned out that he didn't even look at her. Shangguan Ayu finally understood the Kumi's whole plan at the end of the cremation. After several monks took their leave, Lian Qing stood up and that hoped he could find the surreal of his master but only found a few charred bones. He put them into his robe before putting his palms together to salute Shangguan Ayu. Benefactress, please show some mercy. What do you mean, eminent monk? I'm not an eminent monk. I can't settle the score. So please tell me who injured my master. I want revenge. Shangguan Ayu shook her head and responded, Feian didn't want revenge, so he didn't tell me anything. In fact, she had already figured out who did it. As a very powerful Kung Fu master, 
Very few people could injure Feiyun in a normal kung fu competition. Only an unscrupulous killer might be able to sneak attack him successfully. Amongst all the disciples of the Essence Pavilion, only Wild Horse had a chance to do so. Shang Guan Ayu didn't give her speculation, because this was against the last wishes of Feiyun. Lian Qing looked down and thought for a while, I can always find out. But I have one more presumptuous request. Did my master, give you something before he died, or tell you some secrets? Shang Guan Ayu immediately understood that Lian Qing was asking for Kumi. Has Lian Qing betrayed his master? Shang Guan Ayu quickly understood that Lian Qing had no need to betray his master and that he was just being used. Kumi clearly knew that he couldn't gain the trust of the four women, so he used the idea of revenge to persuade Lian Qing. And he would find a way to snatch it away after Lian Qing got the manual of the divine power. Ah, oh, your master did give me something, Shang Guan Ayu deliberately said in a hesitating tone. She didn't lie, but what Feiyun had given her couldn't be passed on to anyone. I know that master doesn't want me to improve my kung fu, but I have to rely on it to get revenge. The one who injured my master must be an expert, so, Lian Qing plopped on his knees and bowed his head in silence. He felt ashamed of his request but believed that he didn't have a choice. Shang Guan Ayu appeared to be in a very awkward position and finally said, I can't just hand over the legacy of Master Feiyun, but if you can find a way to get us out of here, I can tell you an important secret. Lian Qing's eyes lit up, and he stood up and said, Master has passed away so I don't have to stay here any longer. Just wait for me to figure out a way to get you all out of here. The one who was going to figure out a way was Kumi. He would set a trap, wait until the four women believed they were safe and told him the secrets, and then take them all back to prison. Shang Guan Ayu just wanted to use the first half of the trap as she would carry out her own plan in the second half. Everything went just as planned. Shang Guan Ayu suddenly thought of the Dragon King, wondering whether he would have a better idea in such circumstances. In the evening, Lian Qing's way had not come out, and a few other things happened as well, which spoiled Shang Guan Ayu's plan. Two more women were sent to the camp, causing a stir. And as Heba, who had not shown up for several days, appeared at the same time and claimed that he had a way to save them, but only one. Chapter 656, At Night Translator, Henyi Translations Editor, Henyi Translations Luo Ningchu's anger overwhelmed her fear. This was the second time she had been kidnapped in the royal court, and this time's treatment was even worse than the last time because no one had explained to her why she had been kidnapped. The moment her hood was taken off and her hands untied, she was bewildered and at a loss for what to do but she soon started looking around with glaring eyes, searching for someone to vent her anger on. For strange women. No, there's one, two she was familiar with. Luo Ningchu's gaze swept between Shang Guan Ayu and Xu Yang Wei. Instead of greeting or asking them the reason why she had been sent here, she said to Xu Yang Wei viciously, You traitor, you dare to come back and see me. Xu Yang Wei had once served Luo Ningcha for a long time. This threat immediately brought her back to that unbearable period of time. Although Luo Ningcha liked her and sometimes even relied on her, she wasn't so soft-hearted when she was angry. Luo Ningcha had chosen the weaker one amongst the two acquaintances to vent on to. Xu Yang Wei, however, would choose the strongest of the three women to be her protector. Shang Guan Are You? Queen Ju, and Xiao Feng Chai. Xu Yang Wei looked them over, and half out of instinct, and half out of judgment, she jumped behind Shang Guan Ayu like a rabbit being chased. Luo Ningcha strode within two steps in front of Shang Guan Ayu and glowered at her. Give me back the maid. Eighth sister-in-law, why are you so angry? Neither you nor Shang Guan and you are people of the castle anymore. So why are you still calling me your sister-in-law? Get out of my way. Luo Ningcha still had the ability to annoy the other side in just one word. Shang Guan Ayu smiled. Okay, 
there is no relationship between us. However, Luo Ningcha, this isn't your place. You don't have the authority to force anyone out of the way. Luo Ningcha suddenly came to her senses and realized that she had been kidnapped. You, you kidnapped me because you are jealous, she pointed at Shangguan Ayu, stepped back in horror, and bumped into someone. It was an indifferent looking woman. Shangguan Ayu and others already knew she was a disciple of the Waning Moon Hall, but it was Luo Ningcha's first time seeing her. Startled yet foolhardy, Luo Ningcha raised her hand and was ready to strike. You are also a slut of the Dragon King. Before she could react, the disciple of the Waning Moon Hall had slapped her in the face and coldly said, This is for the Master Commander. Then she slapped a second time. This is for Maid Kui. The third slap rang out. This is for me. I'm Han Qin, Qin for Celery. It turned quiet again after three crisp slaps. Han Qin turned and left, leaving Luo Ningcha to slowly accept the humiliation and ponder who the master commander and Maid Kui were. Then she remembered. Wasn't the master commander the hateful lotus who had tried to assassinate her? And Maid Kui was that dumb and blind maid who had been dead for a long time. Luo Ningcha's heart trembled. She was afraid of ghosts, but the humiliation of being beaten publicly eventually prevailed. She covered her face to sob, which then escalated into wailing. Who is she? Queen Ju asked in surprise and displeasure. Luo Ningcha's words of slut of the Dragon King really annoyed her because only she had the right to say that. Shangguan Ayu and Xu Yang Wei didn't utter a sound but Xiao Fengchai had already guessed who this was. She hummed and said, the number one beauty of Jade City, the eighth young mistress of Golden Rock Castle, Luo Ningcha. Both Jade City and Golden Rock Castle were former strongholds of the Dragon King, so Queen Ju was filled with suspicion. The more Luo Ningcha cried, the sadder she felt. All the grievances she felt since her birth welled up in her heart and she immediately saw herself as the most innocent and miserable woman in the world. She had finally won a little sympathy from Xu Yang Wei. Xu Yang Wei remembered that this former lord of hers had always had a high opinion of her and never acted hard on her, so she walked out from behind Shangguan Ayu, took out a handkerchief and passed it to Luo Ningcha. Miss, don't cry. It's more important to find a way out. As she grabbed the handkerchief with her right hand, Luo Ningcha slapped Xu Yang Wei in the face with her left hand, which caused a loud ring. You wretch, traitor, betraying your master for the sake of glory. Xu Yang Wei covered her face, retreated to one side, and said to the others with a bitter smile, That's me. Queen Ju Kuli turned away as her way of punishing Xu Yang Wei for choosing the wrong lord. Xu Yang Wei let out a long sigh. She had been worried that Lotus would dump Luo Ningcha here and didn't expect her nightmare to come true. And the scene was more awkward than she had imagined. There's only one more left, she muttered. Besides Lotus, the Dragon King's women were all here. She really wanted to see how that pale-faced boy would cope with the current situation. Thinking of this, Xu Yang Wei felt much better at heart. Luo Ningcha stopped crying. She looked around once before her eyes fell on Shangguan Ayu. What the hell is going on? Didn't you kidnap me? No Shangguan Ayu had invented her anger yet but then she felt that it was not worth taking this woman seriously, so she softened her tone. We were all kidnapped by Lotus. Lotus? Isn't she the Dragon King's guard? Why did, Luo Ningcha suddenly became alert. What's your relationship with the Dragon King? No one said anything. Queen Ju, however, couldn't bear being ignored any longer. She held her head up high and said, I'm the only queen of the Dragon King. Who are you? Why did Lotus kidnap you? The Dragon King and I, Luo Ningcha shut up just in time. She was not stupid enough to spread that secret. He used to be my servant, and now as my ally Lotus kidnapped me because I had an unfaithful servant killed. I suppose that was her friend. 
Queen Ju's face darkened. The word servant stung her, and Luo Mingcha's ambiguous tone especially enraged her. It turned out that the Dragon King had been so dissolute outside but he always avoided her like the plague. Xu Yang Wei could only venture to break the ice. Can we count her in? Queen Ju and Xiao Feng Chai didn't seem to have much enthusiasm, and Shang Guan Ayu reluctantly nodded before saying, ask her first to see if she wants in. Luo Ningcha already understood their intentions so she hastily said, yes, I'm willing. I'll get revenge on Lotus after I get out and then I'll give each of you a big reward. Now everyone like the most beautiful woman in Jade City even less now. Xu Yang Wei had thought that amongst all the women of the Dragon King, Lotus was the only one missing but the last hostage delivered here was someone she didn't know at all. Of all the prisoners, Red Bat was the most confused but she was very excited to see her instructor here. The Dragon King said that you were all right. You are indeed all right. The Red Bat insisted that she had nothing to do with the Dragon King except for some contact with him in her search for instructor's whereabouts. The others were skeptical about it but Shangguan Ayu trusted her subordinate, though she knew Red Bat had once seduced the Dragon King at the Land of Fragrance. She naturally would not say so. Lotus is mad. I hope the Dragon King is on guard. The Dragon King must know already. The Red Bat's confidence increased the women's suspicion. Queen Ju even needed Xu Yenwei's comfort now. Shangguan Ayu however, suddenly became so calm that even she herself was surprised. All the years of entanglement and fantasy suddenly seemed like a joke, much like her current feelings towards her former identity of Tenth Gongzi, which now seemed redundant and strange. She finally knew what she had been expecting and how to get there step by step. First, she had to take these women with her to escape from prison. The arrival of the Red Bat was a great assistance but Red Bat had also lost her internal energy and couldn't help in urgent situations. Shortly after nightfall, Lianqing finally came back with a reply. Tonight at the third night watch period. Just wait for my news. Everything happened on the same day. Not long after the monk left, as Heba sent someone to invite Shangguan Ayu to have a talk. Xu Yang Wei tagged along. The young noble officer made her feel uneasy. As Heber made a serious apology because of his failure to keep his promises. Tonight is our chance. Something big is going to happen in the royal court and it may be chaotic for the next few days. The immortal master will soon lose his power. I can get one person out and send her to inform the dragon king. His tone made it clear that he hoped for this person to be Shangguan Ryu. As Heba had just been ordered to lead a hundred soldiers to the edge of the Forbidden Zone to assist in the defense. These a hundred soldiers were appointed by the superiors and he had no right to intervene, but all the noble officers had private escorts whose identities were left to the commander's own discretion. You'll have to pretend to be my entourage and find a chance to run away after we get to the edge of the Forbidden Zone. Shangguan Ayu accepted the offer of the other party but she couldn't escape alone and neither could she tell him that she had other plans. I can't go. If you really want to help me, then take another person with you. As Heba was very surprised and without bothering about the presence of Xu Yang Wei, whispered, once the masters have lost their favor in the Khan, they might do anything. Precisely because of that, I can't leave the others and run away alone. After all, it's just to send a message to the Dragon King after getting out of here and anyone else can do it. As Heba blankly stared at Shangguan Ayu for a while and bowed deeply, as you wish. I'm leaving in half an hour. Back in the tent, there was a controversy over who should run off with the officer. Compared with Shangguan Ayu's plan which was unpredictable, as Heba's plan was simple and seemed more reliable and secure. Shangguan Ayu rejected all the opinions and appointed Xu Yang Wei. Me? Why me? Xu Yang Wei couldn't believe it herself. In fact, she had been staying out of it and letting Luo Ningcha and Queen Ju compete for it. Shangguan Ayu felt that she couldn't let things be. 
They were risking their lives to escape and needed a decisive leader, and only she fulfilled all the requirements. She's the only one who cares about everyone in this tent. Who better to inform the Dragon King than she? Shang Guan Ayu's words were not entirely accurate. Xu Yang Wei didn't know Red Baton likewise, she also had no feelings towards Xiaofeng Chai, but it was true that she had no intentions to harm anyone here. The proposal was passed. Perhaps it was due to the nervousness of the impending flight or the weak position they held after Red Bat joined, but Shangguan Ayu's status as the leader was confirmed with this. Even Queen Ju gave up fighting and had no objections to the task when it was her turn to take over. Xu Yang Wei, who was disguised as a small attendant, followed as Heba out of the camp. On the second night watch period, Shangguan Ayu sneaked into the chief's tent and found the waste token placed on a small table. A small lamp was lit beside the table which made the waste token more conspicuous. And the chief was snoring loudly. Shangguan Ayu thanked the chief in silence, hoping that tonight's events would not cause him much trouble. It was a quarter to the third night watch period. Lianqing arrived on time but appeared to be in a hurry. We can go now, but give me my master's manual of the Sumeru mustard divine power first. He no longer wanted to hide his true purpose. Chapter 657 Escape Translator, Henyi Translations Editor, Henyi Translations Lianqing was eager to retrieve his master's Sumeru mustard divine power, but Shangguan Ayu shook her head and refused. This isn't the right time. We are not out of danger yet. Lianqing's eyes widened. For a moment, he looked like a reckless bandit instead of a monk but he soon wrestled his temper back under control. Please forgive me, young benefactress. Ever since my master passed away. Let's get going. This was an arranged escape, so the first half of the plan went very smoothly. More than half of the soldiers had been transferred out while the remaining guards had relaxed their vigilance and only had a few people standing on guard. Lianqing stroked their acupoints one by one and didn't alarm anyone. He called such a coincidence luck. Shangguan Ayu didn't believe in luck. We have to take the nuns away. What? How is that possible? Lianqing's anxiety was on the verge of exploding. What's wrong with that? You are a monk and they are nuns. Are you going to leave them in jail? Lianqing grinded his teeth in impatience. Okay, that's it though. No more people. But he himself also brought several more people with him. Tumi and six other monks had joined the escape team, pretending to be frightened and knowing nothing about Lianqing's plan. They know the way, Lianqing explained. There were not many horses in the camp. Most of them had to share a horse with others. Shangguan Ayu, however, rode a horse alone and followed Lianqing and Kumi closely. Of course Kumi knew the way and they soon got out of the prison area. After another mile or two, Shangguan Ayu stopped and demanded further information on the next stage of the plan. Lianqing had no idea so Kumi said in a low voice, the cavalry of the Forbidden Zone are all stationed in the south so let's head north. We'll turn east at dawn, make a detour and then head south. We'll probably reach the royal court by nightfall. Brilliant idea, Shangguan Ayu agreed as she nodded. But I also have a plan. Let's divide into two groups. One will go north while the other goes another way. Lianqing didn't care one way or another but Kumi wasn't able to cover up his surprise and discontent. This will not do. It's too dangerous. This is the forbidden zone of the royal court, and there's cavalry everywhere. Only the northern side is a bit safer than the rest. So, you go to the safe north, and we'll go in an unsafe direction. Kumi was at a loss for word when his nearby disciple approached and said, Well, you are all women, so it's better for you to traverse the safer northern path, and we'll find another way. Shangguan Ayu didn't want to waste her breath. She beckoned for Shangguan Hong to come over. 
Protect the masters as they go north. This was the order that had been given by Queen Ju before, so Shang Guan Hong nodded to accept it. He neither spoke nor looked at Shang Guan Yu. The brother and sister would rather not talk to each other. Although Shang Guan Yu felt her brother Shang Guan Fei's means were a bit cruel, she really didn't have a good impression of Shang Guan Hong. No, no, seeing his plan falling apart in front of him, Kumi kept shaking his head and even his voice grew louder. Shang Guan Hong's kung fu was average and he had been caught as a eunuch, so he was not qualified to enjoy the knockout drugs of the waning moon hall and therefore, still retained his internal energy. Although he couldn't defeat any kung fu experts or a group of soldiers, it was easy for him to deal with several monks who knew absolutely no kung fu. With his wrist being gripped, sweat sprang up on Kumi's forehead, and he almost cried out in pain. He could only anxiously say, let's do it your way and get going. Let's not waste any time. And we don't need protection. The protection was necessary. Shang Guan Hong would walk the monks three miles northward and then he would confiscate their horses and head out west to catch up with Queen Ju and others. Shang Guan Yu decided to go west and her destination was the flower camp of the second consort. At first, Luo Ningcha was very happy when she heard the plan, right, the flower camp is also in the forbidden zone. The second consort trusts me the most and takes me as her confidant. We will be protected at her place. The other women exchanged a glance and in the end, it was Xiao Feng Chai who pointed out the truth without mercy. I'm afraid it was exactly the second consort who handed you over. Luo Ningcha was stunned. She carefully thought about what had happened to her and finally came to understand. After that, she kept a straight face as she tried to hatch a revenge plot but wasn't able to think of anything even when they were almost halfway through their journey. Kumi and several others were forced to travel northward while Shang Guan Yu led more than ten women including the nuns to go westward. Lianqing volunteered to follow her and she didn't object. The team hadn't gone far before they stopped. The nuns took out several extra nuns' clothes for the five women, who were all unwilling to cut their hair and thus could only cover it up with a hat. Fortunately, it was inconspicuous at dark night. Shang Guan Yu didn't change her dress. Her current identity was that of a female officer of the flower camp. Less than three miles from the prison, the small party encountered the first cavalry patrol which only had seven people. In order to guard against the unrest in the south, the defense of the forbidden zone had been reduced to the minimum. Shang Guan Yu took out the waste token of the chief and calmly claimed that she was following the second consort's order to take several nuns from the prison to the flower camp. The cavalry had no suspicions towards them. They were just surprised that there were nuns kept in the prison, but they did not dare ask any more questions and let them go at once. A few miles away, the second cavalry patrol wasn't so gullible. The leader was a noble officer who had somehow heard the rumor that there were special female prisoners in the prison area. He carefully checked the waste token and then began to check those female nuns, especially Lianqing, the only monk among the nuns. Seeing that the disguises of Queen Ju and others were about to be exposed, Shang Guan Yu winked at Lianqing. The monk's heart was full of anger and resentment. His master was injured and dead but refused to tell him who was the enemy. Instead, his master had trusted an outsider and even gave his most important secret manual to the strange woman. He didn't dare to complain about his master but the hidden persona of the bandit in his heart had begun to stir. The only thing he could guarantee was that he would not play too hard. Before long he had poked the acupoints of all six soldiers and the officer and gotten a few more mounts for the procession, but the resentment in his heart was not yet dispelled. Full of fierceness in his eyes, he asked Shang Guan Yu, you will surely give me the divine power, won't you? I will give you your master's secret for sure. Shang Guan Yu carefully worded her response to avoid being unable to fulfill it in the future. The crowd approached the flower camp in the early morning, and they could see that the fire in the south was getting fiercer and fiercer and that it did not look like a general riot, but rather a large-scale war. 
the ladies changed out of their nuns' clothes. Knowing that the second consort had betrayed her, Luo Ningcha's fierceness was aroused. She felt a need to question this most powerful woman of the Norland face to face so she took the lead and stormed into the flower camp. The flower camp had become a real military camp. The second consort had dispatched all 10,000 of her horsemen here with 1,000 people guarding the camp while the remaining 9,000 lined up in the south. The 1,000 or so female soldiers who had not yet been well trained were also fully armed, trembling as they prepared for a possible battle. The prestigious ladies who had come from various countries hid in their tents and prayed to Buddha instead. Most of the guards recognized the beautiful woman galloping towards them and knew that it was Luo Ningcha who was a favored guest of the second consorts but what they didn't know was that she had been betrayed. Seeing that the ones following her were all nuns, monks, and women who did not appear to be a threat, the guards let them pass without much hindrance. The second consort had put on a military uniform and looked stone-faced. It had actually been within her expectations for the royal court to fall into disorder, but the scale of the chaos was beyond her imagination and it was quickly devolving from an opportunity into a crisis. Seeing Luo Ningcha storming in, the second consort was stunned a bit before immediately standing up to greet the other side with a smile. You escaped on your own? Great. I was just about to send an army to save you. The Khan forced me to hand you over, but he's dead, and now there's no one who can restrain me in the Norland from now on. Luo Ningcha's anger was extinguished instantly. She thought that the second consort would deny everything, and didn't expect the other side to honestly tell the truth, and she even seemed to be apologizing and still acted very warm to her. This made her a bit confused and at a loss for what to do. She thought for a while before asking, you were really going to send an army to save me? See, I've got my army here, and I was just about to issue an order. Good sister, tell me. How did you get out? I was so worried. Luo Ningcha was convinced. She had always chosen to believe in the strong. The enthusiasm and sincerity shown by the second consort had only played a small part, as her words that no one could restrain her in the Norland from now on were the most compelling force behind Luo Ningcha's smile. It was really a scary day. It's the monk and Shangguan are you. Shangguan are you. The second consort was not in the mood to listen to Luo Ningcha's nagging. She turned her eyes to the crowd, swept the nuns and monks and then slightly stopped at the strange women before she finally looked at the red bat, was your instructor. The red bat didn't utter a sound, and Luo Ningcha looked around in surprise. She was just here. Shang Guan Ayu was still there but was already standing behind the second consort. Her bodily movement was so fast that it astonished Lian Qing, whose eyes gleamed with a flash of greed. Ever since the Dragon King had visited her at night, the second consort no longer stayed alone and always had two guards at her side. They saw Shangguan Ayu first and immediately made a move without mercy. Although Shangguan Ayu could only use 10 or 20 percent of the internal energy she had received, it was enough for her to use the subtle shadow lightness skill and the seven circles seven apertures heart stopping finger. The lightness skill and acupoint striking technique were more suitable for this kind of non-murderous fighting. After the second consort finished turning around and before the screams of the crowd had dissipated, the two guards were already standing there stiff on the spot, their faces flushed. Not only had they been defeated by a woman, but they had also put their lord in danger. The second consort shot a glance at the incompetent guards, her smile undiminished. She clapped her hands and praised, excellent move. Unfortunately, there's no such amazing woman like Instructor Shangguan in the Norland. No wonder the Dragon King thinks highly of you and even assassinated the Khan in order to save you. The Dragon King killed the Khan. The women cried out in surprise but the second consort only looked at Shangguan Ayu. It was me who brought the Dragon King into the palace and promised to bring your message to him before dawn. Now this better, I can give you to him in person. Queen Ju couldn't help but become jealous, 
who took a step forward and asked, Where's the Dragon King? I'm his queen. The second consort turned and looked at her with obvious surprise. I was wondering who this dignified woman was, as there are no such eminent figures in the prairie. You don't know how regretful I felt when you refused my invitation before. It was the Dragon King, Queen Ju became the one who felt a little embarrassed instead. You know, a man always hides his best things, so you can't blame him for being selfish. The second consort left a good impression on the three women in a few words. Xiao Feng Chai secretly gasped in admiration and that if Xu Yang Wei were here she would definitely worship the second consort like a god. I heard that the Dragon King and his bodyguard left to kill King Kuari. I don't know where they are hiding now and who's going to be the next unlucky guy. The Dragon King is with Lotus. Shang Guan Ayu was very surprised because she believed that the Dragon King shouldn't have been fooled. I think so. He's going around killing people right now. Lend me your army, a thousand men will do. Do you know where the Dragon King is? Shang Guan Ayu did not answer. A quarter of an hour later, she set off with a thousand horsemen towards the camp of the Land of Fragrance. Her guess was that the Dragon King might eventually return here and that she should rescue her female soldiers anyways. She arrived just in time to see the Dragon King and Lotus fighting in the flames and falling at the same time. Chapter 658 Awakening Translator, Henny Translations Editor, Henny Translations As Ji Yushan Wei fell into the roaring flame and awakened from the icy chill, he opened his eyes. The coldness from the inside to the outside was similar to the symptoms of qi deviation but without the stinging pain. In his ear came old man Mu's boastful voice. You should all thank me. If I hadn't rushed in at the nick of time, you'd all have gone home and cried with a handful of cremated remains. Then he really heard a faint cry. He sat up and felt a burning pain which even overshadowed the chill in his body. He looked down and saw the thick bandage on his bare left chest another scar on his body. Where's she? This was the first and foremost concern of Ji Yushun Wei. Old Man Mu, who didn't even have time to express his pleasant surprise, was stunned a moment before he asked, You mean Lotus? I don't know. I didn't see the corpse either way. She was probably taken away by that madwoman Han Fen. There was fire everywhere and I was busy saving people and didn't notice anything else. I want to see the second consort. This was Ji Yushun Wei's second sentence. He had to take advantage of the chaos to collect the remnants of the royal court, and the second consort was one of the most important pieces. Long Fanyun took one step forward and said, Councillor Fang already went there. He said that the Dragon King could rest assured. Fang Wenchen knew the Dragon King's strategy so it would be alright for him to meet the second consort, but Ji Yushun Wei still didn't feel at ease. Not only was the chaos full of opportunities but it was also full of change. One step wrong, he might fall from the hunter to prey. Queen Ju motioned for old man Mu, Long Fan Yun, Red Bat, and the crying Xu Yang Wei to withdraw from the tent, leaving the couple alone. They had rarely met in the past year. Looking at her, Ji Yu Shen Wei felt very strange and even couldn't even remember her name. I'm sorry for dragging you into this. Queen Ju smiled. The apology showed that they were, after all, truly an estranged husband and wife. This man would never have feelings for her, and she just wanted to hold on to her status. The Ju family of the Stone Kingdom was in a very unstable situation and the only thing she could use to save herself was the title queen. She knew her place. The world is falling into chaos now and no one can avoid it. I'm happy to be with you at a time like this. The two lapsed into silence for a moment, and Queen Ju started to talk about the latest situation in the Norland. The royal court had been reduced to ashes, but all of the forces are still fighting in the ruins. The fact that you're still safe has made the Dragon Army an important force. Red Bat and Long Fanyun will brief the second consort and two Asai respectively. 
They are waiting for your news of your condition. To a sigh. Ji Yu Shenwei knew him as King Riyao's son who used to be loyal to King Kuari. Ji Yu Shenwei didn't understand why he would care about his condition. Ham King Riyao is dead, and Tuasai announced his succession to the title while having more than 10,000 cavalries under him. The frontier army is said to be on its way back. Eventually, he may have more than a hundred thousand horsemen in total and will become an important figure of the Norland. Councillor Fang and the second consort all consider him their most important ally at the moment. In fact, the whole royal court has been waiting for news of your status. King Kuari has nothing left, and his remnants joined Tuasai's army, King Riz whose troops were almost wiped out but his general Jesu fled back to the Nihang tribe in the west with part of their army and he will definitely stage a comeback. He sent a letter saying thank you for taking care of his son Lyman, King Dari and his whole family all fled to the east and it is said that they are taking refuge with one of his sons, the other several kings either ran away or left to continue fighting for the throne. King Shengri is now the most powerful but neither does he have the absolute advantage. How long have I been asleep? Ji Yu Shenwei was surprised. He felt that his duel with Lotus was not too long ago and that so much shouldn't have happened so fast. Three days and two nights. Ji Yu Shenwei jumped out of bed which pulled at his wound and forced his body to stiffen. He had missed too much and had to make it up as soon as possible. Queen Ju carried out her duty as wife by helping him put on his clothes. How did you get out? The royal court was not heavily guarded during the melee. We concocted a plan and ran away. Queen Ju paused a moment and felt that there was no need to conceal it, so she added, Instructor Shangguan played a key role in the plan. Without saying anything, Ji Yu Shenwei grabbed the saber and sword on the table and walked out of the tent. Over forty guards were waiting outside. It was a group of silent swordsmen from the big snow mountain. Ever since the dragon king had been wounded, they had hardly left the tent. Now after seeing him walking out, they still didn't say anything but instead lined up to escort the dragon king to the main tent as usual. This was a mixed camp built in the wilderness. More than half of the soldiers were female soldiers of the land of fragrance, while the other portion were the horsemen of the second consort. In total, there were over 2,000 soldiers, a small but well-guarded army. The soldiers saw the Dragon King and all bowed to show their respects, as more and more people surrounded him. As Ji Yu Shenwei walked to the gate of the main tent and stood facing the crowd, a shout of joy suddenly broke out in the camp. Fang Wenche came up in a hurry with a smile on his face. He opened his arms and seemed to want to give the Dragon King a bear hug but put his arms down when he was three steps away from him, and wiped his forehead. What a coincidence. I've been out for the last few days and just came back today. And even before I got to the camp, I happened to hear the great news that the Dragon King has revived. The situation reported by the military counselor was similar to that of Queen Ju's but in more detail. During the period when Ji Yu Shenwei had been unconscious, the relative balance of power had constantly changed. In all, there were four kings who claimed control of the capital city and proclaimed themselves as Khan but were driven away by another force in just half a day. In the end, the different parties reached a tacit understanding that no one would send troops into the ruins. At this moment, the distance actually represented strength. The camp of King Shengri was close to the south of the ruins. Tuasai and another king were stationed more than three miles from the east and west side, and a dozen miles further out were the remnants of the other kings. As for the second consort and the dragon army, they were too few and could only camp thirty miles away and watch the fire from a distance. But the most powerful force in the royal court is not the king's but rather the hundred thousand court attendants army left by the Khan who have taken over the palace, which is the only remaining part of the royal court. The generals claim that they would not recognize anyone as the new Khan until the real murderer is captured. Real murderer. Fang Wench aside, this is the source of chaos in the royal court. 
As for how the Khan died, there are many different opinions. All the kings seem to be suspect, and even the court attendants' army are no exceptions. Many people are even accusing others with the reason that they are playing the trick of a thief crying stop, thief. And some people even say. Some people even say that I am the assassin. Fang Wenxia bitterly smiled and nodded. They lauded the dragon king to the skies, saying that you threw a short sword from ten miles away which flew into the tent and killed the Khan. But it's alright because this way, not many people believe it. The counselor stared at the dragon king, obviously still having some doubts at heart. I did not kill the Khan. The main tent was empty, and Ji Yu Shenwei couldn't help look around. There was no protector behind him now, and he had to rely entirely on his own abilities to protect himself. It's the waning moon hall. Ji Yu Shenwei briefly introduced Lotus's plan and actions. Fang Wenchu was stunned by what he heard. This is. This is really strange. What's Lotus got against men? Or she, he gave the Dragon King a suspicious look and did not continue guessing. So King Shunri is actually the waning Moon Hall's puppet. No wonder he always attains a narrow victory even when his strength is not the strongest. His opponent's leading generals have either suddenly died or become betrayers every time. So it was that group of madwomen playing tricks behind the scenes. Has Lotus ever shown up? No. But there's a saying that the Khan was killed by a couple of enchantresses. Though very few people are taking that seriously, it turns out that that's the truth. The Norland was destroyed by a group of women, Fang Wenxia kept shaking his head and suddenly said in a very firm tone, so there's a reason behind the saying that women are disasters and that it's better to stay far away from them. Ji Yu Shenwei knew what the counselor really wanted to say. Fang Wenxia had been trying to express this idea from the very first word in their meeting. Dragon King, I've been telling you not to be sentimental but I've done a very bad job myself. But I've got rid of it now. Seriously, I swear to heaven that to any women I. Fang Wenxia couldn't think of the right word to express his feelings. When he saw Queen Ju again, his former infatuation had completely disappeared. His youthful love had come late but left quickly. It seemed as if it were a memory of another person. The only thing he cared about now was the attitude of the Dragon King. I believe you. Ji Yu Shenwei quickly ended the conversation to avoid further embarrassment on either side. Fang Wenxia heaved a great sigh of relief and inwardly vowed to be loyal to the Dragon King but kept his composure on the surface. As a counselor and a military advisor, he could not show his loyalty on his lips like a reckless young boy. The second consort is a woman so she's not reliable. She only wants to use the power of the Dragon King to go to the western regions to meet that Prince Duodun. She may cross the river and then tear down the bridge. Let's get to the river together first. As an outsider, Ji Yu Shenwei had to ally with the nobles of the prairie if he wanted to establish a foothold in the Norland or even merely have a finger in the pie. What's going on with this Tuasai? Alas, it is still because of women. Tuasai was charmed by that Luo Ningcha and would do anything for her. He even forgot about avenging his father. As a new king with no future, his only value is his title as the old Khan's grandson and the army under him, I'm afraid we may go our separate ways before even arriving at the river. Things were better than Ji Yu Shenwei had imagined, and even if he had never been asleep, this was probably the best he could have gotten. The land of fragrance has been of great help. Fang Wenxia suddenly said. Especially Instructor Shangguan. The second consort wanted to break up the alliance before the Dragon King woke up, and it was all her mediating that created this stalemate. Not only did she confirm the safety of the Dragon Army and choose this camp, but she also borrowed a thousand soldiers from the second consort to station here. Where's she? She has been staying with the second consort. Honestly, that's the only reason I believe the second consort. 
Fang Wenchu ignored the fact that Shangguan Ayu was also a woman and he was unaware that he had been advising the Dragon King to stay away from the unique king's daughter all this time until now. Ji Yushenwei was slightly surprised that the counselor showed an extraordinary respect for Shangguan Ayu, one that was neither love between a man and a woman, nor veneration among the unequal, but rather a kind of empathy as if Shangguan Ayu was a leader who stood head and shoulders above the crowd. Very good. Ji Yushenwei had enough information now. Many people are interested in the court attendants' army left by the Khan, aren't they? Fang Wencher solemnly nodded. All the forces are trying to win the support of the hundred thousand horsemen. In fact, the court attendants' army has the sole ability to decide who can become the new Khan. Then let's also join in. The hundred thousand soldiers were not only a powerful force but also the Norlands foundation that could restore stability as soon as possible. The waning moon hall wouldn't let them play their part to their heart's content. Ji Yushan Wei clearly remembered that he had hit Lotus with his palm which would severely injure her if not kill her. Ji Yushan Wei hoped that he had revived earlier than Lotus, as he wanted to meet the real hall leader of the waning moon hall before their next duel. Chapter 659, Pride Translator, Hen Yi Translations Editor, Hen Yi Translations Nobody knew when Han Wuxian had formed her habit of combing her hair as she could do it for almost a half day, fully concentrating on the task and enjoying it as if it were the only thing worth doing in the world. Old Man Mu thought it was a very beautiful scene, but it was a little annoying to watch for too long. And he felt that he had been neglected. Strictly speaking, it was worse than neglect, he felt like he didn't even exist in the other side's eyes. Ahem. Old Man Mu wanted to grab Han Wuxian's attention. Seeing that his cough didn't work, he could only speak up. It wasn't easy to see you. If the Dragon King hadn't woken up, those guys wouldn't have let me in. Actually, with our relationship, he he, they'd be jealous if they knew about our relationship. Han Wuxian seemed to have just noticed that there was another living person in the tent. She slowly turned her head and wore a faint smile on her face, which was the exact same smile that old man Mu remembered. His heart, which rarely found stimulation, began to beat faster. Who are you? Me? Old man Mu. We met three days ago, didn't we? Oh, really? Old Man Mu, that sounds like a very familiar name. Very familiar? We couldn't be more familiar with each other because I indulged myself so much with you that I'm not interested in any other women for the rest of my life. Han Wuxian's smile on her face spread even wider as she seemed to have remembered something from the past. Why didn't I kill you? I got away. Old Man Mu was very proud of this. I am the only one who slept with a woman of the waning moon hall and successfully ran away. Han Wuxian held up her long hair and sized up old man Mu with her head tilted. You didn't seem to be like this before. Now you remember. Old man Mu excitedly walked towards the beautiful woman, I was much taller and handsome than I am now. I became like this after practicing the seven rotation skills. But it's all right, as I have an idea. Aren't you also injured? You've eaten a lot of unknown pills and are chained down by your ankles. Why don't you practice the seven rotation skills too? In this way, not only can you cure yourself but you will also match me well. You don't have to be afraid of being short. Have the others get down on their knees, and then we'll be tall. That's a good idea, but the secret manual of the seven rotation skills is not in my hands anymore. It's all here. Old Man Mu patted his chest and almost cried out with joy at the thought that Han Wuxian would become like him. He cried out, not in joy this time, but from pain. Han Wuxian had made a move without warning and the weapon she had used was her long hair. The smile on her face was still enchanting which made people feel that it would be discourteous to dodge her attack. Old Man Mu discourteously jumped seven steps back and covered his neck as he landed, shocked. He had nearly been strangled by hair. 
Fortunately, he reacted quickly and immediately attacked Han Wuxian's vitals to force her to stop. Even so, a thin wound had been left on his neck and blood was slowly oozing from it. He remembered Han Wuxian was good at secret arts but her kung fu wasn't as formidable. It seemed that his modification on the martial arts manuals of the waning moon hall was quite successful. I understand how love can turn to hatred but you are going too far. I only have one neck. Han Wuxian carefully put the broken long hair down beside her and turned her head to comb her long hair again as if nothing had happened just now. She behaved as innocently as a newborn baby and did not say a word before a long while. You embarrassed me. Do you think I want to be like this? asked old man Mu indignantly. Now he was firmly opposed to judging a person by their appearance. It was you who taught me the seven rotation skills and didn't tell me the outcome. It has nothing to do with that. Among all the men I've slept with, only you've escaped from the waning moon hall, which humiliated me among my sisters. Do I have to die to satisfy you? It's a bit late but better late than never. It would be a bit helpful after all. He he. Old man Mu looked at the thin chain under Han Wuxian's dress. It was this chain that prevented the horrific woman from moving. Han Wuxian, save it. Other men would be enchanted by you and die either elated or confused. I am old man Mu, and your little tricks are useless against me. In fact, you don't have to feel too ashamed. You are not the only woman I slept with at Waning Moon Hall and I had sex with the others in your bed several times, ha ha. I know. Han Wuxian held her long hair in her arms like a newborn baby, her smile growing bigger. Several of them even had your babies. Old Man Mu felt ashamed that he had been used. Lunatic. Where are those babies? Did you kill them all? I thought that your children would be better, and I was wrong. They were all eliminated. Maybe I let you practice the seven rotation skill too early. All the kids had your current appearance. He he, it's not easy to provoke me. This old man is carefree. This was when Ji Yu Shen Wei walked in. He saw Han Wuxian holding her long hair in her arms while old man Mu looked like a timid little beast that wanted to attack but dared not to. With his breath held, he was staring at the other side with fierce eyes. Careful, she can kill with her hair, reminded old man Mu. And he added one more reminder as he walked to the door, don't be fooled by her appearance. This old hag is no younger than me. Old man Mu left the tent, wondering if he could restrain the present Han Wuxian with the seven circles seven apertures heart-stopping finger he invented and that he must try it when he had the opportunity to do so. Han Wuxian looked at the strange young man and asked, you are the Dragon King. Ji Yu Shen Wei nodded and said, we've met before a long time ago. Both you and Lotus used to work for Mamashua. Han Wuxian still remembered him. It was also because of her behavior that day that finally delivered to her the Taoist divine power she had dreamed about and also Lotus, the biggest hidden danger in the future. The reminiscing of the past was over as it wasn't why Ji Yu Shenwei had racked his brains to save this hall leader. It would be a good choice to kill you. Lotus had eaten the blood coagulation pill, and Han Wuxian's blood was one of the most important ingredients of the antidote. In that case, Lotus would only have three or five years left at most, enough for her to kill many people, many people the Dragon King might care about, Han Wuxian replied with confidence. You seem to have a better choice. That depends on how much you believe me. I don't believe you at all but I know that you and Lotus are enemies so we can work together against her. Ah, Lotus. It has been many years since a disciple as outstanding as she has appeared. She's even more powerful than me, the hall leader. I really feel reluctant in killing her. Ji Yu Wei waited for her next words. Perhaps he had gotten used to the garrulous prairie woman like the second consort, but Ji Yu Wei didn't like the hall leader standing before him much. 
He thought that she wasn't direct enough and he could never be sure whether there was any deeper hidden meanings in what she said. He had to constantly remind himself that this was a madwoman who simply looked sane. We can join hands if you are willing to hand her over to me and let me do as I please. Han Ruxian's voice was like her smile, as illusory as a dream. And it was no exception even when she was conducting a meticulous negotiation. Ji Yushan Wei shook his head and refused. I don't want to leave any loose ends. If I can get you out, maybe someone can get her out. What if I can make sure that all they get out is a breathing piece of garbage? That's not good either. Lotus has won the support of many people. The enemy will unite under her banner. Han Wuxian gave out a clear and girlish laugh. The Dragon King really is a killer trained by the Golden Rock Castle. Besides, you love her, don't you? This was one of the troubles brought by women. In a way, Ji Yu Wei agreed with the military counselor. No matter what kind of answer he gave, Han Wuxian would always believe that it was because of love. She and the second consort, though they had completely different personalities, were strangely similar in this aspect. Han Wuxian refused to let go of this interesting topic. The Dragon King didn't say anything, so she continued speculating herself. You'd rather kill her than let her suffer at my hands. Very good. Do you know Lotus's final plan? She wants the world to be in chaos and for the men kill each other. When all the men left are either dead or exhausted, the women will rule the world while she continued to hide behind the scenes. Han Wuxian smiled, not the mysterious smile she had been wearing on her face. Instead, she burst into wild laughter, even more frantic than a drunken Norland man, showing clear and unmistakable signs of madness. If old man Mu saw such a scene, his good memories would be wiped out for sure. The laughter suddenly stopped. Han Wuxian lowered her head and stroked her long hair as if she had forgotten what she had said and she didn't look up for a long while. Lotus is very proud. I've never met anyone as proud as she is. You mean she has other plans? That's not a plan. The so-called letting men kill each other is just a slogan. When she came to power, many women filled with hatred were brought in. Of course, the targets of their revenge were all men. Hatred and madness are the two ways of training disciples of the Golden Rock Castle and Waning Moon Hall. Lotus wants to combine the two so she must instill a strong belief in her new disciples that killing a man is faith. It involves both vengeance and madness. Isn't Lotus smart? What does this have to do with her pride? She's trying to imitate a man who looks down upon her and to even surpass him. That's her pride. Ji Yushan Wei never thought that he had looked down upon Lotus. It was actually her who held grudges towards him from their first meeting, which had not dissolved until a long time later. Han Wuxian was obviously a madwoman but that didn't mean her words were completely wrong. In just an instant, Ji Yushan Wei understood the so-called looking down upon her. He had the ability and experience of pleasing women, all of which he had used on Shangguan Ayu and Lu Oning Cha. For him, it was a means of self-protection, and Lotus should have seen it very clearly for what it was but what she felt was just contempt. Ji Yushan Wei forbade himself from thinking further. Knowing oneself as well as the enemy was one thing but thinking only from the other's point of view was dangerous. That would make him weak and indecisive. She's my enemy, be she smart or proud. Love can turn to hatred easily. Han Wuxian remembered the words said by old man Mu. But I like it. Okay, I'm in. I'll tell you Lotus's biggest weakness. And I have only one request, I have to be there when you kill her. You'll see it. I'll send someone to have the chain taken out later. Ji Yushan Wei had already walked to the door and lifted the curtain when Han Wuxian suddenly said with certainty, Remember, I am much younger than old man Mu. Chapter 660, Reconstruction Translator, Henny Translations Editor, Henny Translations
the news of the Dragon King's awakening spread quickly. The second consort and the new king Riyao Tuasai immediately sent an invitation over to discuss important matters. Fang Wencher smilingly said, they want to see a live and well dragon king. And they will be even happier if you can kill someone in public. Ji Yu Wei asked the counselor to deal with it for now. I'll leave in two hours. Fang Wencher was growing more and more familiar with the dragon king's mind and routine, as he responded, I'll explain to them that the Dragon King was seriously injured and hasn't fully recovered yet. The Dragon King will have time to move slowly behind. Take care. Ji Yu Shenwei still had to see a few other people. These people were like old weapons that had been preserved and hung up for a long time that could be turned back into sharp weapons with a simple polish. The first was Hu Shining, the former training instructor of the Carving Wood Yard of Golden Rock Castle who had been reduced to living in the slums of southern Jade City and eventually taken in by Ji Yu Shenwei as an instructor for young killers. Due to the chaos of the war, the task was not done well and he was once again considered a failure, this time of the Dragon Kings. Ji Yu Shenwei, however, firmly believed that this training instructor wasn't mediocre and that all that he needed was time. So while he was at Xiaoyao Lake, he didn't use any of the immature killer teams even in his times of greatest need. Instead, he had sent all the good candidates he brought from the savage forest and the land of fragrance to Hu Shining and asked him to train them wholeheartedly. After a year of training, Hu Shining had finally completed a full training cycle undisturbed and unmotivated. He reported the results to the Dragon King with the message, 20 people are usable. So far Ji Yu Shenwei had sent him nearly 200 teenagers and only 20 people were usable at the end, which actually met the original expectation. I need proof. So Hu Shining and the 20 teenage killers left Xiaoyao Lake and went deep into the eastern desert of the western regions, and with the help of the guide, rescued Han Wuxian from the Waning Moon Hall and killed four disciples of the Waning Moon Hall without losing any of the teenage killers. Inside the tent, Hu Shining greeted the Dragon King respectfully and called the twenty killers inside in groups to perform a simple allegiance ritual. The killer must have a master and there was no way about this. Without restrictions, they would become mad dogs and harm others, and subsequently die very early. Ji Yu Shenwei noticed that the young boy named Nizeng was also among them. This teenager that had come to the Dragon King to avenge his uncle's family had ended up as a killer disciple. The ritual of allegiance was similar to that of Golden Rock Castle. The killers knelt on one knee, gave their names, and made a few conventional oaths. When they were ready to drip blood from their fingertips into a bowl of water, Ji Yu Shenwei halted the ceremony. Hold on, let's do the blood oath later. Seeing Hu Shining reveal a surprised look, Ji Yu Shenwei added an explanation. I'd like to use another way, a more ancient way. He still remembered the books that he had read in the castle, which clearly recorded that many years ago, the Golden Rock Killers had to kill an enemy together with their master before the blood oath. Drinking a bowl of water with both the killer and the master's blood was merely a simplified ritual of the original. Few people of Golden Rock Castle still remembered these things, but Hu Shining actually remembered a little of it. If you mean swearing by the enemy's blood, I think they are ready. The ritual of allegiance was finished halfway soon. Hu Shining reported to the Dragon King what had happened in the past few days, I've arranged for some hidden sentries to be in most of the necessary positions and haven't found anything abnormal so far. As far as I can tell, the enemy has never tried to sneak into the camp. But there are still several holes that haven't been filled simply because there aren't enough people. Hu Shining only had twenty teenage killers under him. Even if one included the forty swordsmen of the Big Snow Mountain, there were still less than one hundred people and that number was far too small to truly defend a camp of two thousand people. Ji Yu Shenwei made a note of the matter and said, Remove the chains from Han Wuxian's feet. Hu Shining always adhered to the killer's principle and seldom questioned the master's intentions. But this time he couldn't help but warn, Han Wuxian is very dangerous. 
We rescued her, but she has tried to kill anyone who comes near her. Not anymore. Have her make a vow before removing the chains. Ji Yushunwei speculated on the behavior of an abnormal woman in a normal state of mind. In fact, he was not sure about what would happen at all. But this was a risk that he had to take. Send half of your manpower to find two people for me, one is Han Xian and the other is called Shangguan Xiaoming. Yes. Hu Shining didn't ask any further because he knew who these two people were. As to their importance, there was no need for him to worry about it. After allocating more people to search for the two, it would be harder for the rest of them to guard against the possible visit of assassins, but this was also not his responsibility. After pacing back and forth a few times, Ji Yu Shenwei issued the third order. I need a personal guard. Go call Nizeng here. Hu Shining abruptly raised his head, an action so drastic that even he himself felt disgraced. The Dragon King was very different from the previous masters he had served and each of his orders came as a surprise. Even at Golden Rock Castle, Nizen would be a qualified killer. But he has one fatal flaw. He has not yet fully gained control of the hatred in his heart. And the object of the hatred was exactly the Dragon King. It doesn't matter. Ji Yushenwei had already gotten used to the fact that his bodyguards all had varying degrees of hatred towards him. They were like a thorn with sharp ends on both sides, one side damaging his enemies and the other side warning Ji Yushenwei to be on his guard at all times. Hu Shining didn't understand the Dragon King's idea, so he gave up dwelling on it and answered, yes. Nizeng soon arrived to see the Dragon King. Compared to their meeting two years ago, he was much taller and looked more determined, his puerile naivety had almost completely disappeared. Hu Shining said that he was not yet fully in control of the hatred in his heart, but he covered it up well. Ji Yushenwei had had such a guard ever since then. The second person he wanted to see was Shang Guan Yun. This third young master of the Golden Rock Castle and king of the Xiaowan Kingdom of the Western Regions was being held in the camp of the Land of Fragrance. The Golden Rock Killers had taken away King Dari's entire family but had not seriously rescued their real lord. Shang Guan Yun had fewer ropes binding him but his hands and feet were still tied, and his acupoint had been struck by old man Mu. He could only move freely two or three times a day. I probably couldn't stand the treatment if I hadn't lived in a dungeon for years. He seemed cynical even as he complained. Ji Yushenwei beckoned for Nizeng to untie the rope. Shang Guanyun stood up and stretched himself out. The Dragon King's pain seems to have been borne by me while he was unconscious. You know my temper, Ji Yushenwei responded flatly. Then he looked down, having no intentions of saying another word. Shang Guanyun stared at the Dragon King with an amused smile. It seemed that his curiosity had never diminished no matter how many times he met the Dragon King. Remember, I once said that if I was in charge, I would have formed an alliance with the Dragon King in the first place. Yes. Now I am in charge. No wonder the killers of Golden Rock Castle ran away so fast. Shang Guanyun clapped his hands in agreement. The Dragon King may rest assured. There will always be someone left. Hum, I need a reason. The Dragon King changed the topic so abruptly that Shang Guanyun was stunned for a while before he understood. The reason is simple. We are all from the western regions and all want the chaos in the Norland to develop so that we can fish in troubled waters. Meanwhile, we also don't want the chaos to last too long because when the big hand of the central plains comes in, we won't have a chance to fish anymore. I won't give up my revenge. I won't share the western regions with others. Some alliances were destined to be temporary from the very beginning. Shang Guan Yun didn't lie about it at least. I'll have my counselor talk to you. I'll wait. Shang Guan Yun stretched as he yawned again as if he were quite enjoying this limited freedom. Only with the help of the Golden Rock Killers could this camp be considered truly safe. 
Ji Yu Shenwei didn't give Shang Guan Yun too much of a chance to show off. He immediately left with Nai Zeng to meet the third person, who was also a hostage like Shang Guan Yun. Lai Men was treated much better than Shang Guan Yun. There was no rope on him and the tent was also clean and tidy. But he seemed very nervous and jumped out of bed as soon as he saw the Dragon King come in. Shang Guan Yun had revealed his goal from the very beginning, but Lai Men had been following others blindly this whole time. The development of everything that had happened in the royal court was out of his expectation and planning. Dragon King General Jisu has written me a letter, said Ji Yushin Wei. In that letter, Jisu thanked the Dragon King for taking care of his son, which was both a plea and a threat but wasn't something that Ji Yushin Wei cared about. You are free now. You can go back to the Naihan tribe at any time. I will provide you with a horse and food. Lyman was dazed by the news. He stunned for a while before repeatedly asking, I am free. You won't kill me? Hm, King Riz who is dead but the dragon army and the Nihang tribe are not enemies. You can tell your father that he can choose to be either the dragon army's friend or enemy. Lyman suddenly felt more relaxed than ever and even felt about guilty about the whole situation. He should have shown more relief and indignation at King Rizhu's death. I'm not going back to the Nihon tribe. I'll go to the western regions. Prince Duodun is the one I truly serve. Ji Yu Shenwei stared at him for a while and felt that it was the right time, so he said, the road of the prairie is no longer the same as before. If you like, we can go together. Lyman was no longer that nervous. Although the dragon king in front of him still looked sick and blood could be vaguely seen oozing from his chest, he appeared as hard as a stone and gave off the aura of a long saber firmly stabbed into the ground instead of a man casually standing there. I will only regard Prince Duodun as my lord after I get to the western regions. I don't have more requests. Did you kill the Khan? No. Lyman solemnly knelt on one knee. He had seen the guards of the Dragon King perform this ritual many times before. The Norland is going to collapse, and only a hero like the Dragon King can turn the situation around. I would like to follow the Dragon King and do all I can do to serve him. Ji Yu Shenwei accepted Lyman's temporary allegiance and used him immediately. Come with me. Let's go to see the second consort and King Ri Yao. Lyman hesitated a bit because the new King Riyao Tuasai was the largest enemy of the Nihang tribe now. After a second thought, he immediately dropped the ideas in his head. King Riz who was dead and his allegiance to him had ended. Just as the Dragon King had said, he was free. Is everyone trying to enlist the support of the court attendance army? Although Lyman had been captured and imprisoned, he could still learn of the released news so he was very familiar with royal court's current situation. Yes, that's probably why the second consort and King Riyao want to meet with me. I think I can help. I have a lot of friends in the court attendance army. Friends? This was a somewhat strange word to Ji Yushin Wei now. He had just allied himself with his enemy and he knew very well that in times of turmoil, Friendship might be the strongest relationship but it might also be the most fragile. He didn't tell Lyman these thoughts of his, 